enhanced vetting. The government announcing new rules for refugees coming from 11 countries who are seeking asylum in the United States. The agency did not name the countries, but the Homeland Security Secretary says the new security screenings will, quote, make it harder for bad actors to enter the country through the refugee program. Joining us right now is House Homeland Security Committee Chairman, Texas Congressman, Michael McCall. Mr. Congressman, good to see you. Mr. Chairman, good to see you. Good morning. Thank a little you, windy this thank morning. Thank you so much for joining us. We hear the wind. Uh, tell us what you're trying to do and your reaction to this in terms of the vetting of, of the refugees. Well, I sound the alarm about the, the Syrian refugees coming into the country under President Obama. The DNI, FBI Director, Secretary of Homeland all warned me that they couldn't be properly vetted, that they were a risk to the American people. So I'm glad to see now that we have a president and a secretary who's uh, willing to ramp up the vetting procedures on these individuals uh, before they come into the United States. I think this protects the American people. It's very common sense. We're a very generous uh, country, but you don't want to bring in refugees from probably the one of the hottest spots in the world where ISIS used to control and govern uh, into the United States without the proper vetting. But By the way, we should point out ISIS is largely... Uh, on the run. Is that right? Well, and this is the other, I think the president should talk about a couple of things. One is Kevin McCarthy talked about the, the tax cuts, priming the economy, uh, the bonuses, you know, I think 3 million bonuses now, uh, ExxonMobil, uh, $50 billion investment in the United States. But he should also, I think, very strongly talk about, I saw the rise of ISIS under my chairmanship for six years. Uh, the president then at that time, Obama, did virtually nothing to stop this. Within one year, this president has unleashed the generals and has defeated and crushed the caliphate in Iraq and Syria. And it, that's really not talked about enough. How did he do that? So he just gave the power back to the generals to make the decisions. He did. I, I think, you know, President Obama didn't have a whole lot of interest. Uh, he called it the JV team, didn't take it seriously. I did as Homeland Security chairman. I saw the threat coming into the nation, and he basically targeted them with the Kurds and the Delta forces that we put over there uh, to do it. We all, I always knew we could do it. We have the greatest military on earth. Uh, we just uh, had a president that didn't have the political will. Now we do. Wow. Congressman, what the president says tonight on immigration is going to be very important, mm -hmm. too. There are divisions among Republicans about how to go, divisions between Republicans and Democrats. Are we going to see a deal on immigration uh, between the Republican Party and Democrats? And if so, what's it going to look like? You know, I hope so. Uh, Chairman Goodlatte and I have introduced a bill in the House, uh, the majority of House Republican support. Uh, I know the, the president's been negotiating with the Senate on another deal. I met with the secretary yesterday to see how can we get the House and Senate versions together. I think the four pillars uh, that we talked about when I was in the White House with the president, uh, that being border security has to be first and foremost. That's my bill. Chain migration, we have to deal with that issue. The lottery, well, which really makes no sense. If you go to New York, the two latest terror attacks that happened in New York came out of the chain migration and lottery uh, system. And then finally, what is the DACA fix going to look like? I think you're seeing Republicans coming over to the fact we have to fix DACA. Uh, the question is, path to citizenship and some of these other issues. But, so, Congressman, so get... I, well, I have a follow-up to that, though. Mm -hmm. There's one thing you didn't mention in those four pillars, and that is individuals overstaying, uh, the, tourists who overstay their visas, who Good come point. to this country. Forty percent of illegal immigrants in this country are people who just overstayed their visas. In the most recent calendar year, according to the White House, it was nearly three quarters of a million people who wound up being illegal immigrants into this country, including many students. With the economy as good as it is, that makes it potentially an even great, greater problem for the United States with this happening. What are you going to do about it? Uh, excellent point. And this is how the hijackers got into the United States. They came in legally, overstayed their visas, and then pulled off 9-11 wow. so that you're demonstrating why this is so important and you're correct about 40 percent we talk about the you know southern border but 40 percent of illegals come in legally and overstay so in my bill we have the u.s exit uh program that the 9-11 commission recommended which you still with the government still hasn't acted on right well it, we, 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 want... <laughs> we need to pass the bill right and then the funding's important as well which our bill does provide the funding to make this happen once and for all because we don't know when they overstay. We don't know that all the time. We don't know when they're leaving. Excellent point. Well, I, I well it, also, it also the... has to do with the sanctuary that they're getting in, in some ways, right? How is it possible that certain cities are able to just blow off the federal law and protect illegals, uh, whatever the cost? 
Well, and, um, you know, I was a federal prosecutor when there's an ICE detainer on somebody because they're serving out a term or they, you know, had a criminal uh, case in front of them. The fact that some local law enforcement would not work with federal law enforcement when there is a detainer on them from the federal government is really a, a defiance. So in our bill, we just say, look, if you're not going to work with federal law enforcement and follow federal law, then we will not give you federal funding. Mm -hmm. Can I come back to the, the four pillars that, that you were talking about? Can Republicans, conservatives get on board with a DACA deal and can Democrats get on board with a chain migration deal? Do you think there's room for everybody to get together? on? Well, I thought the, the president made a very generous offer to the Senate Democrats and some of them balked at that. So I'm the eternal optimist, but this is a very challenging, uh, one of the most challenging negotiations I've seen. I thought in the room I was in, the president handled himself like the CEO of a boardroom, acting in a very bipartisan way, trying to bring both sides together in both House and Senate. And uh, we'll see. I, I, but, I, what I odds think, on yeah. What's your number? I, you know, we may have to go to a conference committee on this. I mean, we do have a deadline, and that's uh, in March when the DACA program expires. So it has some pressure on Congress. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I still remain optimistic uh, because the president – is showing leadership on the issue. And, and he's coming up with solutions. Go ahead, Christopher. Mr. Chairman, one of the one of the things that have, you, you've been a border security guy, and you've also been pretty flexible with that. Your plan is a mixture of fences and technology and walls. And one of the things that's an issue in your state is a lot of that goes through private property. Yeah. How is the how is the committee and DHS and, and your constituents been interacting with that and how to get this wall built while also dealing with, you know, the sacred Alamo states' right, uh, rights of private land? Sure. And, 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 you know, this is addressed in my bill. The president's talked about this as well, where you have natural barriers like, uh, you know, in, in Big Bend. You got a huge canyon. It's a natural barrier mm. where you have a river. Maybe you can you know, do these concrete levees, but there are creative ways to deal with that. The 2,000-mile wall could be a metaphor for, with technology and personnel as well. There will be physical barricades, and there will be a wall where it makes sense. Uh, it doesn't make sense in some areas on the border. Uh, I think the president's starting to understand that. And in my bill, we uh, mandate the secretary take that into account. So what, what can you tell about this? I mean, 75 illegal immigrants, including 13 children, were discovered crammed into the back of a tractor. These pictures are really incredible, actually, that when the driver was pulled over on a Texas highway, border agents have reportedly seen an increase in the use of tractor trailers for human traffic trafficking. Mr. Chairman, isn't this one of those issues that the president's $25 billion border security plan hopes to fix? I mean, wh what can you tell us about this? Well, I remember that case very well in San Antonio, and it was horrific. Children died in this 18-wheeler tractor trailer, and this is the kind of thing we want, we want to prevent, this dangerous journey they make from Central America through Mexico where they're exploited in many ways, then get to the border, Six to seven thousand dollars ahead to, to get in, uh, and then sometimes put into human trafficking uh, and sort of indentured servants to pay off this debt. We need to close the legal loopholes that exist uh, because right now, if you're from Mexico and Canada, we can deport you in an expeditious way. If you're from another country, we cannot do that. Right, they come to the border, you can't even send them back, and we give them a notice to appear at a hearing. The resettled. Uh, by HHS in all parts of the country, uh, and 90% of them don't show up to the hearing. Wow, okay. So then they're in the country, and then, I mean, you, are you tracking them, or we don't know where they are? This is a failure of the former uh, administration to just let them in the country. And we need to change, and we do, in the bill that I introduced with Chairman Goodlatte, address these legal loopholes that the Secretary talks about. So, you know, the bottom line, Maria, is we don't want to be dealing with this five more years down the road. We want to deal with this in a holistic way with security and DACA and not have to deal with another DACA five, ten years down the road. Yeah, we talk about the border in Texas right there. Well, where are most of the people coming from? Most of them are actually coming from Central America. Uh, Guatemala. The, and uh, Yeah, and, and, and they, you know, again, $6,000 ahead to come across. So we've seen the numbers actually going up lately. Um, and I think they want to get in before we they see that there's going to be a stronger border security they're trying to get in before that happens. Sure.